everyone, this is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, in this week's guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at a David Gilmour-style lead. Now, David Gilmour is the guitar player, vocalist for uh, Pink Floyd, and is just famous for a lot of these very epic, uh, melodic guitar solos that you, you're, even non-guitar players can sing along to. And so we're going to take a look at his tone settings, or at least the tone settings that I used when I played in the intro, as well as some of his signature licks. So if you're a Dave Gilmore fan or a Pink Floyd fan, this would be a great lesson to jump into. And it's actually not that difficult. Dave Gilmore, one of the things I like about him is he's, he's melodic. He spends a lot more time focusing on a really good melody than he does a lot of you know, fast runs and, and that kind of thing. And I read somewhere once where uh, he said that he's not a very fast guitar player, which I like because I'm not either. So anyway, we're going to break all of this down over two videos. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the first half. If you want to watch the second video, as well as have access to the on-screen tab viewer and the tablature uh, PDF file and the MP3 jam track that you can practice along with, you're going to want to go to ActiveMelody.com and look for EP105. So let's take a look at this Dave Gilmore style lead, part one. All right, so we're going to learn a lot in this lesson. Now we're going to start with pedal settings. So I'm going to go through the, the tone that I'm, I'm using, and I'll, I'll go through all the specifics of that. And then we're going to get into uh, the scale that's used so that you can uh, learn those Dave Gilmore licks uh, note for note. But more importantly is you'll know how to then extend that and be able to play a solo like this for hours. You can take the jam track and just play along with it, or you can play along with anything, really, and introduce these Dave Gilmore licks into your playing. They're a lot of fun. And uh, it's pretty addictive. I've I found myself kind of just jamming on it for for a long time. So anyway, let's start with uh, pedal settings. So uh, you can see there's a screenshot. I, I just took that with my camera phone. That's my pedal board. Now normally I don't get into pedal settings uh, because I think it's a slippery slope, and I'm there's a lot of guys that are a lot better into getting into all that. But but this is what I'm using. These are the specific pedals I'm using for for this. What you heard in the intro. Uh, and you can see that there's three pedals turned on. There's the full tone OCD pedal. I'm not going to get into the specific settings of each of them. You can see uh, what the dials are uh, on them, but at least you can see exactly what's being used and the order they're being used. So there's OCD by full tone. There's a Maleco vibrato pedal, the little yellow guy. Uh, really cool uh, pedal. I love that one. And then there's uh, the uh, Deluxe Memory Man by Electro Harmonics. And lots of settings on that, but I'm not going to go through them. But basically, the basic breakdown is the OCD pedal is your overdrive. The, uh, the vibrato is just a little bit of shimmy to your sound, I guess. Uh, and then the Memory Man is, uh, a, you know, your delay, if you want to think of it. There's also a, some vibrato on that as well. And I think it's the two vibratos that really kind of beef up the sound. But anyway... Those are the pedal settings, but now let's get into the specifics. All right, so this song is in the key of C, uh, and it's very simple because there's only two chords. There's an F chord and a C chord. Now, where what may confuse some of you is the first chord that's played is an F chord, so it starts on the F. Now, if you think of the chord, the numbering progression, that would be a that would be the four chord. So it's actually starting on the four chord, and then it's going to the resolving to the one chord, and it's just back and forth between the four chord and the one chord. Um, so, so, your natural uh, inclination may be to start by playing in the key of F, or maybe F major, or F minor pentatonic, or something, because that's the first chord. But that's really not the, the scale you want to work with. What I, what I used, and what Dave Gilmore would use in something like this, now obviously uh, it's hard to generalize his entire you know life's career into one lesson, but in this lesson in particular, I played in one scale, the whole thing, and I know you'll see lots of information on Dave Gilmore playing Dorian mode and all this stuff, which is true, he does. But in this scale, I'm or in this lesson, I'm playing in the C major scale, not major pentatonic. Oh, well, I guess the major pentatonic's in there too. Uh, those are the five notes from the major scale; they're right in the middle of it. But uh, but it's the C major scale, so it's Do Re Mi Fa Sol La Ti Do uh, played in the key of C, and that's what I'm doing. I'm, all of these notes uh, are coming from the C major scale. Let me demonstrate something real quick before we jump into the, the specific notes. I'm going to play the, the backing track, and I'm just going to play the major scale over and over again, the C major scale, just so you can hear how it works. All right, so I've got the jam track playing conveniently in the background. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the C major scale over and over again. Watch this, over the two chords, just the one scale. Here we go. So 
you can see what happens. The scale is the same scale even though the chords are changing underneath it. So you're not trying to match the scale with a chord. You're just playing that one scale. And it's just... Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do in the key of C. Now, now that you know that, uh, you know that all these licks are right out of that. All right, so how do we get to that scale? That'll be the next question that some of you have. Well, if we're playing in the key of C, we know that this is what I do in all these lessons. I'll show you how to find your root fret. That's important. So your root fret would be the eighth fret. And what I mean by that is if you're playing a C major bar chord, whatever fret that you bar on, that's your root fret. That's home bass. So now that we know that, we know that our minor pentatonic scale, which we don't use in this lesson, would be here. That would be your bluesier sounding, right? Well, to get to the major pentatonic scale, now where I'm still saying pentatonic, which means five notes, not the entire do, re, mi, but that's five of those. To get to the major pentatonic scale from the key of C, we're going to move down one, two, three frets. So now look at this. So now we're down here playing that same minor pentatonic pattern, but we're playing it here. So now, this is the major pentatonic scale for the key of C. So all we have to do is add two notes to make it the, ma the full major scale. Not the pentatonic, but the full major scale. And that would be... There's one of them. That note would not be in the minor pen pentatonic. See? You skip it. And then this note. That, those are the two notes you're adding. So all you're doing is adding those two notes to the minor, or to, I'm sorry, to the major pentatonic scale, and now you get the full major scale. And that's what Dave Gilmore is using, uh, or at least what he would use in this type of uh, lead scenario. So that's where all these licks are coming from. Just now that you know that, let's get into the specific licks, and you'll start to see it make sense. And I'll call out the different patterns that I'm playing through uh, as well. Okay, so the first thing is, is this lick. Now, uh, so again, remember it starts on an F. Now, what gives Dave Gilmore his sound is these pre-bend releases that he does. So he'll bend a note, he'll bend a string without making a, no a noise like that with his left hand, and then he'll pick it and then release it, as opposed to like your typical blues guy might go, you know, they'll pick it, bend it, and release it. He'll just go. So it's a, it's a minor little nuance, but those are the things that make up his style of playing. That's one of them. So let's start with this lick. So I'm starting with my ring finger on the fifth fret, fourth string, sliding up to the seventh fret. Then we're going to go to the fifth fret, third string, seventh fret, third string. Where are we at? Look, we're right in the middle of the minor, or I'm sorry, the major pentatonic scale. Also, we're in the middle of the major scale. Remember, it's the the the, the only difference in the major scale and the major pentatonic scale are those two notes that I showed you. So, those there's your first no, uh, four notes, or actually three notes. Now watch this. So there's a bend and released. There's, or I'm sorry, a pre-bend release. So we're gonna pre-bend on the seventh fret, third string and then release it. Then we're going to play the 5th fret, 3rd string, and then down to the 7th fret, 4th string. So let's put all that together we have. Now here's another thing that I did. Another th I'm not picking, I'm picking these notes. Those are being picked, but here, look at that, I'm going to pick it once. And then I do a release, pull off, hammer on. It's actually pretty simple when you break it down. It, it feels more comfortable to do that than to try and pick those notes. And then I went... And so that's between the 5th fret and the 7th fret. A little hammer on there. Oh, that's on the 3rd string. And then there's that final note on the 5th fret, 3rd string. All right, so now we get into another very signature Dave Gilmore uh, effect, and that's intense string bending. He's like the master string bender, and uh, so hopefully you're not trying to do this lick on an acoustic guitar. You'll you'll kill yourself. But um, the next thing I played was. 
Now you can see the importance of having um, some kind of a, an effect where you've got some sustain, you know, ringing out through your amp or whatever you're affected because. <laughs> I mean that just really just kind of keeps going. The sound goes. So I only d picked it once, but the you know the tone kept going. Now I start that with fifth fret, fourth string. We slide up to the seventh fret, just like we did in the first lick. And here here we are again, fifth fret, third string, seventh fret, third string. So that's familiar. Now watch this. Once we hit that seventh fret, third string, we're gonna go ahead and bend it to a full bend. Now full bend is when you go two frets above where you started. So if we start here, that's the note we're trying to hit. No problem, we got that. But then what Dave Gilmore might do is push it up one more step to match that note. So you go and then back to the to the full bend. So you go to the full bend you go a bend and a half, then back to the bend, and you're doing all that, you're controlling all of that with your left hand. You can see, uh, you can see your right hand is completely unnecessary for that part of it. And you're gonna have to use your ear to tell you if you're if you're on the note or not. This is where you're gonna to have to have some sense of pitch to know if you're doing it right. If it's just muscle memory, it'll be too kinda of hard to do. So just just play around with that. That's I would spend a lot of time just working on bends like that, trying to get you know, so other guys that like Buddy Guy is an is an amazing string bender like that. He can really bend it, you know, multiple frets, and Stevie Ray Vaughan, you know, he's another one, just, some of these guys were just, you know, they had the the toughest fingers f from doing that. Um, okay, and I don't know what string gauge uh, Dave Gilmore uses, maybe, a, he may be using a 9 gauge, I'm not sure, but anyway, that, this these are 10s, for those of you that are wondering, so, um, so it, it hurts a little bit, but you, your fingers get, you know, you get used to it, it's part of the the gritty nature of playing this kind of bluesy stuff anyway I think so um, all right after that watch this I let that release and come down to the fifth fret fourth string with my pointer finger okay let's back it up from the beginning we have Now watch this. And that's how I concluded that. So that's just again just a hammer on between the fifth fret and the seventh fret on the fourth string. And there's that fifth fret uh, fourth string. I'm sorry, fifth fret third string right there. And then watch this. There again, same technique is that that pre-bend release. So it's 7th fret, 5th fret on the 3rd string. And, and when I bent and released it, I did a pull off so that my last note is the 5th fret, 3rd string. Oops. There we go. Alright, we're going to back up. I'm going to do it slowly. We have... Okay, now, then we get into this. Now, Dave Gilmore might be using a, he would use, or he does use, rather, a, uh, a whammy bar, a tremolo, on his guitar. Uh, not always. It, you know, it just depends on what guitar. He grabs a bunch of different guitars. Usually when he's playing on his Strat, he, he'll do that. But in this, I, I did not use one. I just did everything with the left hand, which he would do, too. So it just, you know, just depends on the song he's playing and stuff. But so what I'm doing here is I'm on the eighth fret second string, and I'm gonna do a full bend. You can see we're still in the in that like minor pentatonic. Even though it has a bluesy sound, we're still we're in the major pentatonic or the or the major scale rather. Um, so it's kind of interesting that uh, it it kind of is starting to sound a little bluesy when, the, and that's because you're doing this. Which is something Southern rock guys do, and you know, lots of lots of people do. But um, anyway, 
full bend there on the eighth fret second string. Take your pinky at the height of the bend and then play this note, which is the eighth fret first string. So when you put it together, it goes. And the hardest part of this, and this, if you've got a tremolo, you may want to hook it up for this part of it, is to do this. To, to, to do a full do a full bend and then do a vibrato at the height of that bend. It's a really hard thing to do, and that's where guys like Angus Young from ACDC and you know Clapton, uh, especially his Cream era, uh, just pros at taking a, a bend and just making it uh, you know sound so melodic. Sounds like the human voice. I've always been mesmerized by that. I spend more of my time in learning to play the guitar on those things than I ever did learning scales, learning speed, doing practice. It's like the little... You know, that, I, that, that can take you a long time to get that. But anyway, that's the technique there uh, for that. And then I went... Now let's look at what's happening. We're going into pattern two and up to pattern three of the major scale, major pentatonic scale at this point. So now we're, we're you know, pattern two would be here. These little five notes. So now, and if you're not sure what I mean, what do you mean by patterns? All of that's covered in the blues lead course at activemelody.com. Uh, even though this isn't blues, we're not in the minor pentatonic scale, it's the same patterns. That's the, the beauty about these is once you learn them, it, you can transition them from major to minor and all that. Okay, so anyway, we're going to slide up to the uh, uh, ninth fret third string. Uh, this is the eighth fret second string. And then there's the tenth fret second string. There's your little pattern. So. Now from here, I went. So after. That I came up to the twelfth fret second string, and went. That's a half bend. That's very important. Do not do a full bend here, and I'll explain why. But that's the note you're trying to hit. If you do a full bend, it starts to sound like cornball. But a little half bend. That's a total Dave Gilmore thing. He does a lot of these little half bends. He's really good at that. Like if he's in the minor pentatonic scale, he'll go. That's the same note, by the way, in a different place. Um, but those little half bends are really, really nice. So anyway, it's a half bend on the 12th fret second string. Now watch this. It's a bend, release, pull off, hammer on. Let me do it slowly. Bend, release, pull off, hammer on. Let's back up and get to that point. So we have... And then the final note there is the 10th fret 2nd string. I'm sorry, the, actually, you land there on the 10th fret 2nd string, but then you slide down the, to the 8th fret 2nd string, and you'll see that in the tablature. That was a sloppy version, let me try it again. And that's that little lick there. Uh, and then I came back and did something we've already done, which is that. Uh, well, we d we've already done part of this. We've done this pre-bend release thing here on the seventh fret third string. So now watch this. This is interesting. I'm only picking this not once, but look at how much mileage I get out of that. Most of that was through the sustain of the note. Okay, before we learn the last little part in the first half, let me back up and play through everything again one more time. We'll do it slowly.
Okay, and then the last thing I played was... And that's just a very straight walk down of the minor pentatonic scale. So it starts here on the 5th fret 1st string. Then we go to the 8th fret 2nd string. 5th fret 2nd string. Then we do a bend and release here on the 7th fret 3rd string like this. It's a full bend, by the way. And then the last note is the 5th fret 3rd string. So all together it goes. And you're picking all of those notes. It's alternate picking. Down, starts with a down stroke. Then we go up, down, up, down. Okay. Um, so that's the first half. Let me back up one more time. I'll play through it. Um. the first half then it goes up to and some of that starts this that's that part I think sounds a little like Eric Clapton but um, but then some of those notes like that very Dave Gilmore so we get you know we get uh, there's just a lot of stuff in this and hopefully what this does this lesson starts to open your mind to different ways you know whether it be the pre-bend release stuff or um, just getting into different, you know, like holding a note like this. You wouldn't think to do that. It's not a normal thing. Most people, if they're going to hit this note, they're going to bend it. But And Dave Gilmore might bend it, but a lot of times he would hit a note like this. Or just play a note like that. To come down on that note. That's a weird, kind of a weird thing, but very unique to him. And he's obviously very astute in, in his musical knowledge. He's a very, very sharp guy, but... Um, so anyway, that's Dave Gilmore part one. Make sure you watch part two to watch this to learn the second half. Uh, you, you're going to want to go to activemelody.com EP105 if you're not a member already. I hope you are. We have an awesome community over there, lots of members, and it's uh, just a lot of fun. Uh, every week we've got something new. So all right, we'll see you in part two.